Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad you announced the title of this talk because are you sure you're all at the right talk? Uh, <laughs> when I walked in, I assumed that this must be somebody else's because uh, the title and what I've been asked to talk about, frankly, is so vague and uh, grandiose that I thought that hardly anybody would turn up. Economists, people who don't know what they're talking about by definition, talking about a subject uh, which nobody knows what they're talking about by definition, and, and certainly so. Uh, I'm frankly rather surprised that there are so many of you here. And uh, having said that, I may disappoint you because I'm actually going to try to talk about things that are a little bit more concrete and specific uh, than might be implied by that uh, rather vague title. Uh, firstly, I'm going to talk about what I assumed is the subject that everybody really wants to discuss uh, at this festival, but uh, dare not, uh, dare not uh, uh, mention its name, to speak its name, uh, namely the economics of Brexit. Uh, I will then, uh, in deference to the organizers, uh, broaden it and generalize it a little bit more or quite a bit more to talk about why uh, I think we are in a period of uh, extraordinary uh, instability and unpredictability uh, in our understanding, not of economics as a theoretical discipline, but how uh, the economy works. And thirdly, uh, and most importantly, how that interacts with our political system, uh, where, again, looking all over the world, but right here in Britain, uh, we're, you know, unfortunately right in the cockpit of it right now, uh, we are clearly in a period of enormous political uncertainty and turmoil as well. Uh, but let me begin with the specific, and obviously that will then loop back to talking about where we are uh, with the Brexit politics of today, uh, literally today after the resignation of the Prime Minister yesterday. Uh, I'm going to talk off the, off the top of my head, but the one part that I couldn't remember is what the specific description of this talk was in the program, the essay question. Is current political uncertainty affecting the economy in ways that we cannot yet see? So I'll start by talking about that rather specifically in the context of Britain over the, over the last few years and in the years ahead, because that's obviously been a big theme uh, of our political discourse uh, since June 2016, the referendum. Uh, the claim is that uh, nothing has really changed as a result of the Brexit referendum, of the fact that Britain is almost certainly going to be leaving the European Union. And therefore, all the predictions that were made during the referendum campaign by those, uh, those people, I would say, I was going to say those of us, so let me repeal, reveal to you exactly where I stand, uh, all the predictions that were made by those of us who believed that it was a serious mistake, a very bad mistake, to leave the European Union uh, could be co completely dismissed as a, some kind of fantastic project fear. Uh, that is a classic example of what was described in the rubric, the, the economics of uncertainty. It is not, the economic results are not yet visible or not yet fully visible to uh, the naked eye, if you like, to the general public of something that uh, has happened. Now, the evidence is uh, actually, if you look at it closely and if you're an economist, is pretty clear that already, even though Brexit hasn't happened, already the anticipation of Brexit has actually had a very significant effect on the British economy. And in fact, strangely enough, an effect almost uncannily in line with the predictions that were made during the project fear period and according to um, most members of our government and probably our future prime minister have been totally and utterly contradicted by events. The fact is that the predictions that were made, and I've got a, a few charts just, just to lighten this up, uh, the main prediction that was made uh, before the Brexit referendum, uh, and, the, and the scariest one, if you like, was that the average family, the mean family uh, in, in the UK would lose something, the mean household would lose something like 4,500 to 5,000 pounds in purchasing power per year 
as a result of the most extreme form of Brexit, namely the total uh, rupture with Europe and membership under WTO rules, which is now pretty much the official policy, not just of the extreme of the Conservative Party, but of all the leadership contenders in the Conservative Party. Uh, and that is the prediction that is said to have been totally refuted by events. Now, there was a second prediction, which was refuted, which was the idea that there would be a recession immediately after the Brexit vote. Now, that didn't happen. There was a big fall in certain uh, uh, parts of the country. There was really a collapse in, uh, for example, in property prices, especially in London and Southeast, about as big as the one that occurred in 2008, 2009, the financial crisis. But there wasn't a generalized recession. Uh, and that was a prediction, crucially, that was only made uh, by the Bank of England on the basis of short-term economic forecasting, which has never worked. And incidentally, uh, economic forecasters have never correctly predicted recession. Uh, over the last 45 years, the IMF did a study. They identified something like 350 recessions, identifiable recessions around the world in different countries. And they found that there was not a single case in which the, the conventional economic forecasts used by central bankers for predicting what's going on in the next six to 12 months predicted that recession as, as, as much as a year ahead. So the fact that they failed to predict a recession is not surprising. It's, absol uh, it's absolutely par, par for the course. But the really significant uh, uh, forecasts that were made before, before the um, referendum was this idea that uh, living standards would fall dramatically by, as I say, 4,500 or as much as 5,000 pounds per household uh, as a result of the most extreme form of Brexit, WTO membership. Now, you'll say, of course, that hasn't happened. You know, maybe living standards have fallen a bit for some people, but they certainly haven't collapsed in that way. Uh, but then those of you who might, you, who, you, you might be trying to anticipate what, what I say will say, well, the excuse that I'm going to give is, well, after all, Brexit hasn't happened. It's just the anticipation of Brexit. That is partly the explanation, but that's not really the explanation or excuse, if you like. The real explanation is that that was a forecast of what would happen over a period of 15 years after Brexit. And, this is, and, and that was because this was based, these forecasts, which were not just made by the Treasury and the Bank of England, but by international institutions and so on, were not just, were, were not just trying to predict what is going to happen in the next month or quarter or year. They were trying to understand what would happen to the structure of the British economy as a result of the uh, rupture between Britain and its largest, and also crucially geographically, its closest uh, trading partners. Now, that is the kind of uh, economics uh, is often uh, compared with uh, to weather forecasting, uh, and rather unfavorably, and rightly so, because weather forecasting has now become quite an accurate science. Now, what we know in weather forecasting is that it's pretty good at predicting uh, what will happen in the next week or so. It's also very good at predicting, at least I believe, and most people I suspect in this room believe, structural changes such as climate change. You know, what will happen uh, to the climate in 30 years, 50 years, 100 years. Uh, where it's very poor, just like economics, is in telling you what the weather will be like in uh, January, on January 25th next year, even in comparison with the average weather for, uh, in January. We have no idea whether January next year is going to be colder or warmer than next January. And in a way, economics is the same. We can predict with great accuracy what will happen next week or next month. You know, I can guarantee you there's not going to be a recession and there's not going to be a boom in the next three months. Uh, we have no idea really of what's going to happen in the next year or two, or, not, or no accurate idea. But by thinking about the changes in the structure of the economy and productivity in the uh, competitiveness of different industries, we can make pretty, uh, pretty convincing uh, predictions or analysis of how an economy will change over a period of 10, 15 years. Now, the interesting thing about that forecast of a 5,000 pound loss of purchasing power to the average household uh, as a result of the most extreme form of Brexit is that was the annual impact of leaving the EU on Britain after 15 years. If you translate that into the decrease in GDP of national income uh, uh, per head, that translates into a decrease of about 7.5 to 8% in GDP 
which is about the same as 5,000 pounds per household. And you might say, well, that hasn't happened. Of course it hasn't happened. That's over a 15-year period. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI-TV.